Welcome to uh, LinkedIn Live um, and our series of helping organizations thrive. Uh, we know we have been having uh, really challenging times uh, and how we all respond to the impacts of this global pandemic. Um, so I wanted to interview uh, guests who provide insights, uh, robust strategies to really help companies and thrive in these times. So today I have the great pleasure uh, of Ben Baker, all the way from Vancouver. Uh, welcome, Ben. Hey, thanks for having me, Julian. It's it's nice. We're eight eight hours uh, time difference away, but it's it's like we're right beside each other. Absolutely. You've just had your breakfast, and I'm about to have my dinner. So uh, yes, Perfect. I love the town difference, and I've so my daughter been in in BC as well. So I'm very used to that, and I also know you very well. So yes, um, and I just want to just tell people a bit more about who you are. So, mm -hmm. so Ben is the president of his own company, Your Brand Marketing, and he has a passion for enabling companies to communicate their value inside and outside of the company. And I've been watching. Ben, over these last three or four months, um, really post some really uh, insightful content, some engaging content uh, that uh, really will helping people at this time. And on the back of that, Ben's also release, releasing a, a book in the next couple of weeks called Leading Beyond a Crisis. So it's great to have you on the show. And um, the purpose of the show is to, to really help people and give some insight into how people are thriving. And I, I just want to ask a little bit about your, your own company, and how it's been the last three or four months and how are you starting to try and get into that thrive mode with your own business? Yeah, I, it, it's interesting because I tell this story that uh, part of what we do is I do professional speaking and do professional speaking across North America and, and worldwide. Um, and there was a bunch of us on a Zoom call about mid-March and mm -hmm. we were playing bingo. And the bingo was, who was going to have every single job that they had canceled first? Right. And okay. w within three days, the majority of us had every single job that we had planned for the next nine to 12 months canceled. Goodness me. And, you know, I mean, I had a trip to Australia that I was supposed to be in in August, uh, you know, all across the United States, a few things in Canada. We were talking about a tour in, um, in the UK in fall. And all of that, you know, went by the wayside in a matter of 72 hours. So you're looking at it going, okay, I have two choices. I can either grab my knees, rock back and forth and, and hope, hope that this is over. And, and this has just been, you know, this is just going to be a blip in time. Yeah. Or I can realize that, you know what, this is probably going to be with us for an indefinite amount of time. What's next. And, and I chose what's next. And, and what, what was that? What was, why did you choose? I mean, what was, I mean, you had those two choices, which, you know, a lot of people are having. What is yeah. that place of taking that, uh, the choice that you've taken? I guess I've always had the philosophy of the glass isn't half full or half empty. It's refillable. Okay. And right. if we, if we take a look at the glass as refillable, that there's always something else you can do. There's always a way out of a situation. There's always a way that you can pivot and you know recover let's just figure yeah. out how and it, mm. it's something i learned really early on from my father my father was an entrepreneur mm -hmm. he had two failed businesses before he succeeded extremely well yeah and you know so i've i've watched people you know go from you know the heights to the lows to the heights again and i realized that you know what there there's always another day there's always another you know turn it back there's always mm. another whatever. And it's a matter of setting yourself up for the next opportunity. And you don't know when the next opportunity is, mm -hmm. but if you aren't always looking a little bit to the future and saying, okay, where are people going? What do people need? Where are people's wants, needs, mm -hmm. fears, desires, whatever, how can I help? You're not, you're not going to enable yourself to be set up for that success. So I really started taking the time and looking. And the first, I'd say, six or eight weeks of the pandemic were all about how can I help people? How can I make other people's lives earlier easier? I'm going, I'm not going to make money. I said, for the, ne for the next six or eight or 12 weeks or whatever it is, I'm not going to mm -hmm. make money. And if I do, it's a bonus. Yeah. 
Um, I realized that what I had to offer at that particular point in time was not something that people wanted. But before I could figure out what was next, I, I needed to talk to people and sit there and say, okay, what were their challenges? What was happening? What was going on in their lives? Mm -hmm. What did they need? And it led to a couple of video series that I created uh, about leading in a crisis and leading beyond a crisis. And the second one is a leading beyond a crisis that ended up being the impetus of the book that Claire and I wrote. Mm -hmm. uh, what we did is we ended up recording 12 uh, videos that ended up being about six hours worth of, of video. Wow. And what it was, was, okay, where are we going next as, as, as leaders, as companies, as people, you know, what are the things we should be keeping our eye on? And we sat there and said, okay, we're going to record these and we're going to mm -hmm. you know, publish these and hopefully they're going to help people. And we just, you know, sent them out for free. You know, here they are, they're on my YouTube channel. Yeah. Please send it out to your people. And the other one was just me, myself, tips and tricks for leaders, five to seven minute videos things that leaders should be thinking about, about how to take care of their people, how to listen better, how to empathize, how to, how to check in with people, all those type of things. And I sent those mm -hmm. out to companies as well. And it was the responses that I got back that were valuable. Mm -hmm. You know, it was like, Oh, I didn't think about that. I didn't know, um, you know, that was a great idea. Um, you know, I really appreciate it. And what it, that did is it gave me the impetus to sit there and say, okay, Prior to COVID, you had put out a, you know, you had had a, a, a live two day, live and intensive course called Developing the Leader in You. And for some reason or other, last November, I recorded all the videos of that course. Hmm. You know, I, I recorded all those videos. I was good. Yeah. I, the, the thought process is I was going to turn that into a, uh, an online course. So I did, I went out and I turned it into an mm -hmm. online course, but I realized the online course itself is useless. You know, yes, it's, it's 50 videos. It's, a, you know, it's uh sorry, it's 25 videos. It's a 50 page workbook, mm -hmm. but without the live interaction, without the engagement, yeah, you know, it, it really doesn't do much. I mean, certain people can learn that way. Certain people love to just mm -hmm. sit there and consume information and do stuff on their own. But the majority of my clients were sitting there going, well, we still need someone to sit there and talk to our people. Mm. So what I did is I converted that fairly early on in COVID, probably about six weeks into COVID, uh, into a six-month program. And what I did is a take well, the a, online a, a leadership program. I yeah, a leadership yeah. program. It's a six-month okay. leadership program. Yeah. And what it is, it's for teams. So what we do is we took this information Mm -hmm. And we sat there and said, look, you've got 5, 10, 15, 30 employees that are your next generation of leaders. Yeah. We want to train them as a group. We want to make this more cost effective for you and do it in a way that people can do it anywhere they are in time manageable chunks. Because nobody wants to sit in front of a screen for eight hours a day, two, three days in a row. It's just not practical. No. So what we did is take the online course you know, watch the videos, do the workbook, and then let's meet for four consecutive weeks for 90 minutes a week and talk about what we learned. Mm -hmm. And then for the next five months, let's meet once a month and go over what we learned and say what works, what didn't work, what mm -hmm. are the challenges that are coming. And what it did is not only did it help these people learn together, but it gave them a common language, it gave them a common purpose, it gave them yeah. a common thought process. Mm -hmm. Brilliant. And it allows people to be better leaders because it breaks down the silos within the organization. It creates mm -hmm. better communication with the organization. And it means that the employees are treated, you know, very similarly across mm -hmm. different departments. So marketing, sales, all that. If all your leaders are all thinking the same way, they're all going to treat their teams the same way. You know, yes. within, you know, I mean, we have personality, you know, differences. And obviously sure. that's going to happen. But they all are going to come in with the same thought process. You know, uh, meetings are going to happen. Empowerment's going to happen. Engagement's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Listening's going to happen and all that kind of stuff. So what it's all about is how do you pivot? How do you take a look and sit there going, what do my clients need now? Well, it's now, interesting. It's interesting just going back to the start where you, instead of, you know, going back in a chair and start to rock and thinking, 
that's it, game over. Um, you 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 went out to help, and mm -hmm. you used that sense of purpose, your sense of of who you are, what you do, and you help organizations, but you really own, own that. And I guess did that create the engagements with um, with companies? And from that feedback, you were realizing yeah. actually, I can help people here. I've got all these online tools that you just developed, online sort of courses that you can um, sort of pivot and change and adapt. Um, and that created a sense of purpose for you, which meant yeah. you were just pushing and starting to create that almost that thrive mindset, really, wasn't it, really? Well, um, exactly, because what it allowed me to do is, first of all, go out there and help. You know, first the first thought process is, how can I help these people? You have companies that are sending people home with no idea what they're doing. I mean, let's face it, 95% of companies went home without a plan. They put a band-aid and duct tape and they sent people home and they hoped for the best. And a lot of people thought, okay, they're, people are going to be home for two weeks. Yeah. You know, the initial thought was people are going to be home for two weeks. My wife went home. She still has food in her desk. <laughs> you know, I, I'm hoping it's just crackers or something like that, yeah, you know, yes. and it's just in a sealed package or something like that, but it's in a locked desk. You know, no one else has the key except oh my her. Goodness. You know, she probably won't be back at her desk. There might, be, there might be a vaccine in that desk by the time you get back. Exactly. I mean, she yeah. doesn't think she's going to be back at her desk until 2021. Yeah. You know, so those are the things that we need to think about is that, we just sent everybody home on a lick mm. of prayer. There was no process. There was no procedures. Mm. There was no, you know, a lot of these companies created brand new communication programs within the office in 72 hours. I heard stories of companies, you know, 90,000 teams, uh, you know, setting up a 90,000 person teams engagement program mm. within, you know, within a week. Can you imagine what that must take for an IT department to be able to put that together right. and figure out what needs right. to happen and how to put all that thing together? Yeah, so, and I spoke to I spoke to a lot of people who were literally sending everybody home in a weekend, which would yeah. have taken normally a, a six month project. Yeah, um, and it's interesting. I think at the early days, people thought, as perhaps your wife thought as well, leaving the food there, that actually this is going to be for a month or so, and perhaps by the summer. But actually, now people. I'm talking to are not even going back to October or even 2021 mm -hmm. and it's it's the long term view and it's not been a, it's not been negative it's been realistic and rooted in that reality but having a view that how do we then play this out yeah. for that long term how do we engage teams how do we keep people motivated and I guess just turning that to you know some of the stuff you've already been doing and talked about what sort of two or three strategies would you really give to organizations right now who have been through that phase of they've sent everybody home they've adapted zoom teams whatever they've used people got into yeah. the groove of it almost what next how do they sort of navigate the next six 12 months All right we i talk about in the book uh we talk about sprint mentality versus marathon mentality yeah and over the last 120 days whatever you know however you're clocking this it's been a sprint mentality as you said, we went home on a weekend, you know, yeah. and everybody, okay, everybody home and we'll do it. And we put band-aids on things. We put duct tapes on things. We, we did everything in crisis mode. We did what we needed to do to take care of our people. We did what we did needed to do to take care of our vendors and our clients yeah. and whatever, but it was short term, you know, do it now because it needs to be done. Mm. Now we need to start looking at this and codifying it. Businesses have an, a unique opportunity today to sit there and say, what can be? Yeah. You know, what if, if, if we're going to be home, if we're going to be changing our way of business, if we're going to be looking towards the future mm. and part of our people are going to be at home and part of our people are going to be at, at the office and mm. you know, communication is going to be different. What could this look like? And every single employee needs to be re-onboarded. Every mm -hmm. single employee needs to understand what is the new purpose of the company? What is the new vision of the company? What is the new mission of the company? Where's the What's the new direction that we're heading in? What's changed? What policies yes. have changed? What procedures have changed? What methodologies have worked? What clients have changed? You, know, what are, you Sorry, interrupt using that word yeah. onboarding. It's almost that people have joining a new company. Oh, it's not they completely are. changed, but it's it's changed dramatically it in is. terms of how you're doing and how you go to market. And I think that phrase onboarding again is, is quite key, I think, isn't it? Definitely. Yeah, it, it's a mentality thing because 
it, uh, people think of onboarding is okay. Here's your set of business cards. Let's fill out your, you know, your healthcare forms and you're onboarded. Mm. That's not what it is. Onboarding is bringing people into the culture of the organization. It's getting people to understand how they belong, why they matter, mm. ha- giving them a sense of the, of the historical story of the company, mm. where it is, where it's going, what it does, who the customers are, who the vendors are, what do we really do and why do we do it and why do people care? Yeah. That's what onboarding needs to be. And because we've had changes and some companies it's slight, you know, some companies it's dramatic. Mm. And unless we take the time to codify what those changes are, get rid of the sacred cows, figure out mm. what what's worked in the past, what, what hasn't worked in the past, get rid of what hasn't worked, talk to our people and sit there and say, okay, if you could do this better, how would you do it? Yeah, and be able to build those processes going forward, you can set yourself up for success, you know, over the next six months, year, three, five years, because this isn't going away. And even if it does, even if COVID-19 goes away tomorrow, you know, even if if, if by the end of, you know, September, Mm. every single person in the world is vaccinated, uh, you know, and and we're 100% safe for COVID-19, there's going to be another crisis. Yes, and it may absolutely. not be a worldwide pandemic. It may not be, you know, mm. but there will be another crisis in your and my lifetime. And we need to be constantly thinking about how do we set ourselves up for success? Mm. And what are the things that we need to change going forward? How many companies didn't even have a clue that they needed a, a business continuity plan? You know, that, that didn't even have anything in place, or if they had something on a shelf somewhere, it hadn't been revised or, or updated or or no. tested in five years. So you're sitting there going, okay, what happens if we have to send everybody home again in six months? How would we do it better this time? And mm. let's sit there and work together and say, what are the things that we need to have in place as a company in storage, yeah. sitting there ready to go, if something happens and it could be just a flood, you know, it could be just the fact that your building, God forbid, burns down or there's yeah. a flood in the neighborhood and you can't get, and nobody can get to the building or you know, whatever, you know, you need to be able to think about, okay, we, what did we learn from this? Yes. What did we learn from this as an organization? Where are the holes in our, you know, in our, in our game plan? Believe me, after mm. 9-11, how many companies that had buildings in the towers and around them you know, seriously yeah. sat back and went, oh, my mm. God, yeah. you know, we never would have thought that nothing like this ever happened. But now their business continuity plans are so much stronger because of that, mm. because what they've done then is, is said, OK, this will probably never happen again, but it could be something else. And yeah. we're probably ready because we're we're thinking about outside the box and different things that could happen and yeah. how are we going to you know, how are we going to respond if we have to yeah and, and i think it's because often people see looking back as a as like a negative in life and i i always see uh, obviously within coaching we're always moving forward uh, but actually reflecting and actually wondering how could you do things differently uh, not in a oh we did it wrong but actually learning from things and using even the last three months, people have learned tremendous amounts of stuff about themselves, about resilience of an organization, how they are adaptable, agile or not. Um, but it's it's almost reflecting, is it? And re- re- reviewing that and how can we do things better? And just in that continuous sort of learning cycle to keep that agility going. Um, I think that's really important because we are in a time, certainly with COVID, but even as you said, there's always uncertainty. There is nothing certain no. uh, at all. And so we have to prepare and be in that mindset, not as a doomsday, but more of a just wisdom. It's just got some wisdom about it. Yeah. I'll take it even one step further. We should celebrate our failures. Yes. Because yeah. our, our failures will teach us what not to do again. Mm. And if we learn from them, if we're going to sit there and say, well, that didn't work. Okay. Uh, never saw that coming. All right, yeah. what are the things that we learned from this? Yeah. It's not well, a blank well, I, always say, I always say to my clients, failure is just feedback. That's all it is. Exactly. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Yeah, you're just going the wrong way. Oh, not quite right. Let's do something else. That's all mm -hmm. it is. And it creates a better mindset, definitely, moving forward. Um, and conscious of time, uh, even though we could be on here for three hours, but I know we've both got uh, busy things on here. Um, and I really like your, the aspect of onboarding and the whole thing of, you know, sort of being agile, agile and sort of reflecting on what we've just done and how we go forward. Um, just before we finish, I mean, and I'd like you to sort of tell you, the audience a little bit about how they can get in contact with you and a little bit about your book that's about to be released in the next uh, couple of weeks. Yeah, I, I'll start off with the book. The book is, uh, I co-wrote it with Claire Chandler. Uh, she and I, uh, she's, she's another leadership, you know, phenom that she and I found each other through LinkedIn and have, have gone, gotten together and, you know, the, the book is 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 stage one of, of a million things that I think that we're going to be able to do together. And, and she's absolutely wonderful. The book is called Leading Beyond a Crisis, a conversation about what's next. And the great thing about the book is, first of all, it's a conversation between uh, Claire and I. It, it is literally a transcript of the 12, of the six hours of mm -hmm. conversations that have obviously been edited down, They've you know, that we've clarified, we've done some things with it. But at the end of each chapter, we ask a question and we leave eight or 10 lines for you to be able to answer it yourself. Mm -hmm. So it, it's all about self-reflection and what, what are your thoughts on leadership? What, you know, what, are the, what does leadership mean to you? And that's what we really want to get out of the book is, is allowing people to find out what does it mean to them? Because there is no one true definition of being a leader. You know, to me, a, a leader is someone who wakes up every morning and says, how can I make my team better? Yeah. How can I provide them with the tools to succeed? That's, that mm. to me is a true leader. Uh, but leadership is something that you have to do in your own style yeah. based on who you are, what you do, and why you do it. But that's where the, the purpose of the book is. And it should be out on Amazon, I'm guessing, by mid-August. We're, we're just finalizing the cover now. We're just sending the, fi the final text to the, uh, to the printer. Uh, mm -hmm. And that, and that should, should, be, should hopefully be on the shelves at Amazon about the 15th of August. Uh, and we're going to set that up so it'll be available worldwide. Perfect. The, uh, the best way to get in touch with me is through my main website, which is yourbrandmarketing.com. It's yourbrandmarketing.com. My podcast is there. My Developing the Leader You course is there. Uh, information on, on my books are there. Every, everything, and there's lots of free resources as well. Um, my attitude is there should always be stuff to give away on a website that helps people be better. And that's, that's, that's what I put on that website is mm -hmm. there's lots of material there for free that hopefully will, will give people the impetus to you know to take a look at their lives mm. and sit there and says how can i make it better it's not that your life is bad it's how can we make it better and yeah. we, we we can all improve you know present company included absolutely definitely well thank you for your insights uh thank you for your passion um and your energy as always i uh, always love speaking to you every now and again we have our little chats and uh, thank you for coming on today and uh, much appreciated Julian, Thanks, it has been a pleasure. It is absolutely a pleasure. I love doing these things with you. And, you know, let's continue to keep the conversation going. Absolutely. Brilliant. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Cheers. Bye then.